the flame is rising, the flames in the horizon are at my door. I'm staring at the ruins, the memories of a broken mess. I scattered on the floor. It's fine ever since. I never cease. I see hope coming. I see that hope is coming to pull me from the ashes and ignite my soul. Oh, oh, oh. oh burn away the darkness. His love is like a burning. It's fine and safe. song to start us over here. What a day. We just want to welcome you wherever you are. Great to have you with us. It is officially Proverbs 30 day today. Can you believe it's the last day of the month today? Pastor Nikki and Lillian, what a month we've had. It was absolutely, and it was supernatural. And I just, you know, I'm so excited when I hear burn, burn, burn. Let your fire burn. And tonight, your fire, your heart is going to burn for Jesus. Amen. You know, that is, it's attraction for God. Come you on. Know, when you are opening up your mouth and you sing and it's, there's such a vibe in you. I just yeah. love it. Wow, we're going to have a good time tonight, Jen, aren't we? We definitely are. And yes, I really believe that the Spirit of God is so, uh, I, I almost want to say there's a burning passion and a desire within Him to touch us and to restore us 
to build us up, to see us walk in everything that Jesus paid the price for us to walk in. So thank you for being a part of this broadcast. I'm excited for where we're going today. It's going to be a good, good night. Now listen, wherever you are, come on, Mike. I, I want you to sing that song again for us, okay? Come on, let's, let's just right. make a declaration tonight right at the beginning right, of the so program. We're going to allow the fire of God to burn in our lives. Come on, let's just enjoy this moment right now. And we're going to be back and talking about what's going to be happening tonight as we talk about finances even further. Absolutely an amazing atmosphere right here in the studio tonight. Yeah, we're in the middle of the week. And you know what? It's family night tonight, wherever you're watching yes, from. But we're going to be right. speaking to the business people. We're going to speak to families, moms and dads, every one of you, wherever you are watching from. It's going to be an absolutely marvelous night tonight in the presence of the Lord. And, uh, you know, just to kick things off, Samantha, great to have you with yes, us. Welcome, All right, let's give us. Sam a big God bless you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike, as uh, he stands in with uh, Matt and Kelly being away for tonight uh, and tomorrow, and uh, they've gone up to visit their granddad and uh, family over this time. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Samantha is Waldo's daughter. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, there we go. We got a father and daughter going over here tonight. All right, in the band, and uh, she's got dad's talent for sure, hasn't yes. she? Oh, yes. <laughs> she's got a mom's looks. Mom's looks and dad's talent. <laughs> okay, just as well you don't have dad's looks. But, uh, you know, you've got mom's looks, which is a good thing. So, uh, great to have you with us. And, uh, Mike, thank you so much for that great introduction. And uh, that song of the fire of God tonight. Listen, let us know where you're watching from quickly right now. All right, come on, tell us what you believe in God for tonight. Where you're watching from, tell us what's happening in your home, in your life. Because tonight the fire of God is going to touch you. I believe tonight we're going to see a shift yes. come in this whole area of finances That's that we've good. been talking on this week, Pastor Nikki. You know, it, it, uh, you know, you've been building from Monday, Tuesday, and tonight. I, I feel tonight things are going to break. Come on, yes. you know, Come on. and the fire of God is needed to do that. It yes. must burn up everything that is yes. not of God. Yes. 
And God wants His people prosperous and blessed. And open your hearts for that. Let the fire of God come and consume you. And as the Word of God is being taught, you'll get free minute by minute in Jesus' name. Amen. That's right. Amen. Supernatural. You know, I almost feel like um, I was just praying last night as, as I was going, you know, just thinking about what happened during the sessions and how the questions just kept pouring in. And I really pray that more than anything, you would have an overwhelming sense of the peace of God yes. when, we, when we speak about the subject of biblical finances. Because really, we need to understand that at the, the whole foundation of this is a good God. He is good. He's not someone who's sitting there with a book, you know, kind of scrutinizing every little movement just in case you did something wrong or you miscalculated something. That is not what this is about at all. It's really about a very good God who is so generous and who has a covenant with His people. A covenant to bless you, to provide for you, to protect you. It's really all about that. And so we have to be very careful that we don't get fearful concerning the regulations and the, you know, the ins and Why? outs, but that rather we have a peaceful understanding of the word and that's what i pray more than anything is that god's peace would really govern our conversations Amen. today that's right. and that his wisdom would flow yes. just from his spirit to your spirit Amen. that we wouldn't get caught up on the on the little details that actually don't matter but rather that his spirit would highlight the the ways that can unlock you walking in a new realm of his blessing in your life that's really what we want to happen today so let's not get caught up in in finer finer details that really don't matter but as Andre answers your questions and I praise God for the wisdom that he has to do that yes. and as as we together as a team hear from the Spirit of God to bring understanding that's really what you need an understanding of how good God is and how to apply his principles practically but not in a way that it causes you to get all tied up in knots and confusion but rather that it comes with an absolute peace and an overwhelming sense of His love for you. That's what we want to kind of cushion and carry this whole conversation That's today. Right. That's right. You know, after 197 days together, wow. all right, and wow. uh, we're not counting. We right. just know it's 197 right. days no. together. <laughs> but the thing is this. We want more than ever the love of God mm. and God's goodness mm. to overshadow you. Mm. That's what my heart is, that every one of us will step into a full understanding of the Word of God pertaining to this area. And we've taken this time and we're going this week and the whole month of October is about opulent October. Yes. We're going to talk about financial matters and we're going to talk about things God. and the blessing of God mm -hmm. through the month. You can't not speak about it. Yes. And uh, we're about to cross over. You're about to step in at midnight tonight. You're about to step in to your opulent October. Yes, yes. that's right. And I want you to receive everything that God has for you. I don't want you to be on the outskirts. I don't want you to be watching and longing and wishing something would happen for you. I want you to be in faith with us to believe that yes. God will do it for you. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Nikki, that's really what my heart is. My heart is that every one of us will come with an expectancy for God and say, God, this month I'm trusting and I'm believing for you to do what you've promised you would do over my life. Honor your word. Amen. You know, and, and what you say is so true. We want every one of you to be a part of the the outpouring and of the blessings of God. That's right. You know, I've heard a very interesting interview of a, um, a tour guide that takes people up to um, Mount Everest okay and so they're asking this why do you risk your life taking all these rich people because it's like hundred thousand dollars just to get right. to the top and he gets like seven thousand okay. dollars salary okay. so they say why do you take all these people up to the top and risk your life for such little money and his statement was so profound he says clearly you haven't been to the top 
Wow. He says, because when you see the top, that experience, that experience is, is priceless. Yes. Wow. And that's what we want to do today. That's yes. so good. We want to take everybody to the top. Mm -hmm. It's not just a few that's going to get there and we're going to leave you behind. That's why it's so important to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And we said we're not going to go to the next topic until all the questions are answered. Come on. Because we want everybody to, to go there. Us. We are not travel agents to tell you this is how you should walk and this is how you should get there right. we are tour guides we've been there so we're taking you up with us so that you can be successful and experience the blessings of God sure, because the, the view from the top is much different than the view from the bottom that come is on. beautiful, come on. beautiful I love lovely that. illustration yeah, I love that. that's I a beautiful awesome. beautiful illustration good job alright come on where are you watching from tonight if you out there if you're joining us as a family come on just just hashtag opulent October right now mm -hmm. I need just, I need some of you to step into October before we even get into October. Now, for some of you, it's maybe six hours away. Others of you, you're already in October. <laughs> Depending what time zone you've watched. Others, you're still going to get into October tonight at midnight. Your time zone. But if you are believing God for His goodness and His grace and His presence to come upon your life, I want you now to log on quickly onto our Facebook page. Go to myfaith.tv and I want you to hashtag opulent October is mine. Nice. All right, that's what I want. I want you to claim it right now. And uh, I'm going to show you just a little bit of a pre-clip of what we're going to be playing out in October. October is all about us believing God for His favor and blessing. for His blessing. And so right now, come on, let's, let's get ready as we welcome opulent October into our lives. Go for it. Why? You must ask that question. Jesus, why did you become poor? The Bible says that through his poverty, we might be made rich or have a baby. It's not God's will for you to live your entire life on Struggle Street. He wants you to leave Struggle Street and live where your life means that you can have the resource to do all that He's put in your heart to do. They say a truly rich man is whom his children run to him and his hands are empty. The question is not how many seeds are in an apple, but how many apples are in a seed. If you're down to your last dollar, don't ever spend it. So it. If you will get God's will and God's purpose and God's anointing and God's vision for where you are, there's acres of diamonds right where you are. Because if Jesus is there, victory is there. If Jesus is there, provision is there. If Jesus is there, favor is there. No cross, no crowd, no press, no oil, no trial, no triumph. Prosperity is not God meeting your needs. Prosperity is God lifting you to a place of kingdom wealth to meet the needs of your generation. Moses is living in utter opulence. He's gone from the projects to the palace in a day. This month of October, I just speak it over you. It's going to be the greatest October that you've ever had. Oh, opulent October. Yeah, we and it's all kicking off at midnight tonight. All right, so whatever time, I want you to be in faith. If you, if you believe God with us, if you're trusting God in your life, just say, opulent October is, is mine. mine. Yes. I want you to grab a hold of it because, you know, this whole... This whole month, we've got great things lined up for you. Amazing speakers coming on with us right through this week. In fact, even on Friday, Pastor Kevin has uh, Pat, uh, I believe Pat uh, uh, Schwarzlin, I believe it is, with him uh, on the program on, uh, on Friday. It's going to be an absolutely powerful time. Pat and Karen Schwarzlin, it's, it, they're going to be live on Friday night's program. Dynamic evangelists. All right, speaking about faith and speaking about the Word of God as we chatted with them today, they got excited and it's going to be a great program on Friday. You don't want to miss. Tonight, tomorrow night, we, we're going on in this whole area of financial well-being and financial prosperity. And then on Monday, we've got Eddie Richards. 
All right, Eddie Richards with us on Eddie Monday. Uh, Eddie, Eddie James. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking of someone else. Eddie James. We got Eddie James with us on Monday night, okay? And then on Tuesday night, we have with us our great friend, Jerry Savell. All right, so uh, we're going to have just a glorious time as we roll through the month of October, and we have other speakers that we're busy lining up to be able to come and minister the Word of God to you the favor of God yes. over your life. And, uh, and, and that's what I'm excited about. And the favor of God is going to rest upon people. Amen. I really sense that. Hallelujah. You know, like um, the Bible says in Luke chapter 2 that Jesus grew in wisdom and in favor. And we're going to have favor with God, favor with man, and you're going to grow in that. Yeah. And you're going to see by the end of October, miraculous things are happening in your life and it will that's happen right. that's Jesus right name. you know the word does say that god's love is unconditional and he's not a respecter of persons so his love is the same for everybody but favor is a completely different thing that's right you can always grow in the favor yes. of god Amen. the word tells it again and again different ways how we can increase the favor of god in our lives in fact when we did the study on proverbs there was one proverb after the other that spoke about how you attract the favor of god and it has everything to do with you personally making the choice God I love you I love your word I, I seek after you you are who I chase after I want to walk in your ways yes. I want to know your ways because I love you and if that is the attitude you have then let me tell you you are a magnet for the favor of God yes. that's right that's right and you know through the month our heart is to get people on the program that really understand the supernatural favor of God yes. And uh, they've just told me we've, we've got Mark and uh, Destiny as well that are going to be on the program on Friday with Pastor Kevin as well. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Wow. Mark and Destani Kasota. All right. They, they're going to be with on that program. Also powerful, <laughs> powerful, amazing uh, men and women of God that understand the favor and the wealth and the prosperity of God. And they're going to be talking faith into our hearts. So we've got an, a fantastic lineup coming through the next few days. And I'm excited about that. Okay. So uh, stay with us. Stay connected in all that God has for us. It might be the last day of September, but it's the beginning of the month of October for you in what God has for you tonight. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed about that. Now, just very quickly, before we get into the word tonight, I, I want to go. Uh, Bande did a little um, a recap for us and a little bit of an update. They're busy installing and preparing the groundwork for the uh, big uh, water tanks that will be going up to house the fire suppression system at the dome. And we're a few weeks away. They had cast a foundation that was not... Uh, uh, good enough. We had to redo it and create a, a, a better foundation. Uh, the suppliers weren't happy with it because of the weight and everything. And uh, so it's taken us a little bit of a time, but uh, they're fixing the error. And uh, we just so excited about what is taking place. The tanks have arrived. And uh, let's cross to Buffalo City right now and let's cross to Bundy as he gives us a quick report. What is happening, Bundy, with the update of the Great Faith Dome? Another faith dome update right now, but right now we aren't in the dome. We're actually right there near the tankers, or where the tankers are going to be. You see behind me all the construction stuff for the tankers is being prepared and laid out for a future date where they're going to be putting the tanks all together. So excited for this project that's happening. Right now, though, I would actually like to invite a friend, a new friend of mine, Bertram, who's from Decker Projects. Bertram, come join me here and tell us more about what you guys and your team are doing right now. We're busy with the earthworks right now because now we have to stabilize the earth and then the tanks can sit on top because this tank is a much, very much bigger tank and it's very heavy. So how long is it think it's going to take you guys with the stabilizing and then putting the tanks together? It's normally up to one month. Then we stabilize it and then the tanks can go up after the first month. 
Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Bertram, for that update. Well, that's what's happening right now, as you can see, this Faith Dome update. Listen, man, guys, these things feel solid and they can be put together, and it's going to be an incredible uh, project that we're working on. Some of the earthworks that Bertram was talking about that are being done, you'll see that the guys are actually digging, and they've got the jackhammers going, and those jackhammers are hitting straight into the ground. It's so exciting. And even these, when they arrived, they arrived on that bed with the truck, and it was so incredible to see all this equipment, the boxes, and even one of the pumps arriving as well because we want to have two pumps in there and it's going to be an incredible work that the guys are putting together listen for each and every single person that's been supporting this project being a part of this faith dome we thank you and we want to honor you for the great and incredible work that you've been doing we take our security and the safety as a very important and vital part of this faith dome project and it's because of your prayers and support as well that have been a big pillar in that safety and security because we know that it's the blood of Jesus that is the most powerful thing that will protect us but for legal reasons we're putting everything else in place as well so you, you are comfortable and safe in this space so thank you once again for being a supporter of what we are doing right here in the faith dome continue to sow into this project continue to support this project continue to share with your friends about this project because when the faith dome is open you are going to be a part of it and you are going to be in the dome with all of us singing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So don't forget, these tankers are going in and it's going to be incredible fun right here in the Faith Dome. I never dreamed in my wildest dreams we would have to provide tankers to house enough water mm. on site to be able to quench any fire over the Great Faith Dome. Crazy. And uh, I'm not talking mm. of a small tank right there. There are two of them going in. I don't have the exact figures at my fingertips, but it's something like millions of yeah. liters yeah, wow. of water that have to be <clears throat> held on site Wow. And uh, massive pump stations have to be put in place that if anything happens, those pumps can uh, uh, release that correct volume of water into that and faith dome. Right at the right pressure and everything. So um, we'll give you updated figures when I've got all those figures. But uh, uh, they, they had built a preparation place for those tanks to stand. And the engineers came and said they weren't happy. Uh, with the depth and the quality of what they had built and they said they got to redo them and make them sure. bigger because of the weight of the water of uh, millions and millions of, of gallons of water that is going to be housed right over there uh, in the uh, Buffalo City area on our property to be able to uh, blast into that whole area of the dome should it be needed. Now we know the only fire that's going to be in that dome is the fire Hallelujah. of God. Alright, so we're excited Amen. about the fire of God. Alright, but uh, yeah, just keep believing with us, keep trusting with us, and as we shared earlier this week, we have postponed the November uh, date for the launch into 2021. We have felt this is the right thing to do. Only today, the uh, government released airline protocols of international travel that we were uncertain about what would be happening and those protocols have just been released today uh, that we've managed to get a hold of and we felt well it's a great thing that we've been able to push this out because it will suit us better we want to make sure all of us can come together and fellowship not with a mask not with anything but just the presence of God and where thousands of us can come together and worship him yeah. in spirit and truth and that we're looking at being the month of February, March, or April next year. We will give you the exact dates as soon as we have them finalized, but it's looking very probable to be towards February, okay? But we're just waiting for some of our other guest speakers to confirm that those dates suit them, and then we will release the official date to you. All right, so we're doing this all with wisdom, and we ask that you just have patience with us. We know we're all excited to be there. Pastor Nick, we're all well, just we so ready. To get in that building, we can't man. wait. It's going to look good. But, you know, it's, it's all for the best. Yeah. Yes. It's wisdom and it's for the safety of the people. So, and I think everybody understands where we're going. Mm. At least we're getting there. At least yeah, we're, we're getting, getting there. Step by step, but we're getting there. <laughs> all right. Now, now tell me, 
Churches are open. Mm. All right, all over, exciting, and the churches are open. People are praising. We had such positive reports already of what, what took place. Right. And uh, are, are, you, are you looking forward to Sunday? I am. You know, we had on Monday night, we had all the volunteers coming together. Right. And, you know, I've heard some people that said they started crying. Oh, when they just when saw, they saw the people. people again. Oh, yeah. yes. you know, even Michal, my son, said, Dad, you know, I had tears in my eyes when I just saw people again yes. in the church, yes. in the church. Yeah. Seven, yeah. seven months. Seven, seven months when people, was the last time people were in church. Wow. And so we're looking forward to Sunday. We're opening up on Sunday. And so yes. we'll be streaming live right into <laughs> awesome. our church. So I want to be part, in the first You're going to be part of the first service all the way from I want to preach... For the first time Praise after the seven months. All yeah. right, NBCFC, you better make sure no, you're there. Don't yeah. miss all right, that. your pastor's going to be there preaching live all the way from the studios over here in the USA, direct into your service, just for you. Oh. All right, so it's going to be a special time. 1.30 in the morning, we'll start. Uh, yeah. 1.30 in the morning. It's going to be a big day for us because it's two services in the morning and later my yeah. is mine. But we so did. it's yep. big. It's going to be day. a busy day. A well, day. do you know what? We actually decided that what we're going to do, since you have to be ready for your service at 2 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> we thought we'd start conditioning we'll wake you. wake you at 12. No, first I think at 10, make sure that you, we'll you know. phone you at 10 to make sure you're awake and then, and then at 11. At 12. And then, you know, we'll just every maybe half an hour after that just but to make Jen, sure. I think we'll come and visit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are seeing that you so, <laughs> so go to bed so late <laughs> to help you. All the time oh. changes, all the time yeah, slots okay. around the world. Listen, it's going to be a great day. I yes. want to encourage you this weekend. If you haven't yet got back to church, yes, go, go to church. To church. Go. go to church. Get in that motor car. Get dressed up. Come on, put on your Sunday best. And let's begin to fellowship all over the nation of South Africa, all around the world. Let's fellowship with other saints on Sunday. It's going to be absolutely an amazing time. And don't just sit back and say, well, I'm going to wait to see what happens. Wear the mask if you have to. Yeah. Go into the fellowship. Yeah. You can slip it off and sneak it. Don't tell them I told you when you're praising the Lord, okay? And if you want to shout out and praise the Lord, just slip it off. Say, praise the Lord and put it back on. Do whatever you need to do, okay? But come on, we, we're going to have a glorious time. And NBCFC, you better make sure you are there, your pastor. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, Lillian's going to be with you over there. There All were right. so many comments. I think it was the day before yesterday when we said, what did you do? It was on Monday, yeah. obviously, when we said, what did you do this weekend? And when I went back and I watched all the comments of the amount of people that said, we were back at church, we were back at church. So yeah. praise God it's for like that. the people of God. I said to Lillian this morning, it's like, imagine how the children of Israel felt after 400 years yes. going out and to build a tabernacle for God. Yes. I, I can just imagine yes. that excitement, that that drive to say we're going back to wow. to build a, a tabernacle for wow. God, you know, place of worship, awesome. place of worship. Come on, I guess That's the same right. is with David. You know, when they had to recapture that ark right. and get back to the place where they could enjoy the presence absolutely. of God together, and how he just danced in the streets, Amen. just absolutely free and delighted to be in the presence of yes. God again. So it's it's actually something that's gone through history. So we're so going to make sure that NBCFC are all thing. dancing in your, in no, your undergarments, no. all right, on no. Sunday. All right, the whole church. No, I knew this was going to go the wrong way. No. Oh my NBCFC gosh. all together. What do you got to I'm say gonna, to them? I'm going to walk with my camera to uh, Pastor Andre and Jenny's home and just wake them up at 2 o'clock oh so that they can greet you, NBCFC. <laughs> We will be in our <laughs> undergarments yeah, at, that, yeah. at that hour. That's all I can promise you. But, uh, you, you, you know, they, they're telling us over here, uh, they're saying, Pastor Nikki and Lillian, just sleep in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. All right, just, just sleep Aww. in the studio. And uh, Haley says, why don't you just sleep in the studio? Come on, it's going to be a great time. Sunday morning. Yes. All right, for those of you that have not yet been back to your local church, mm. I want to encourage you, get back into the flow and get back into what God has for you. Sundays are a place where we gather together, and uh, we're just so excited. You know, our, our local church has been meeting Sundays, Wednesdays, Fridays. We, 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 we're going to increase it even. And it's just every night people are just coming together just to be Enjoying able to get it. everybody Enjoying through it. the doors. Yes. All right, we're just giving multiple That's opportunities awesome. for people to come because you're still limited to 250 in a, in a particular venue. 
But uh, come I think on. Pastor Kevin actually mentioned about that just the relief on people's faces, you know, to know that they can be amongst other worshippers and actually just receive together. And, and even when it came to ministry time, they yeah. were so hungry for That's that. That's right. Yeah. So, what a wonderful culture we can reignite. Yes. Amongst the children of God, we need each other. God oh, made us. Exactly. God yes. didn't make yeah. us to be in isolation. No, Correct. No. Definitely not. Absolutely. I see Gladys actually said in Limpopo, their church was filled with many people and many gave their lives to the Lord. That's Just wonderful. That's absolutely. Amazing. That's wonderful. Now we know the churches are limited to 250 people. Mm -hmm. But make sure you get into that queue. Make sure you be a part yeah. of that register. 250. Register. Do whatever it takes. Yes. And even if you can get to church only once every two weeks or every three weeks because of the limitations of the numbers, I, I want to encourage pastors, do more services. Mm. There's no reason why you can't rotate and have four, five, That's six okay, services okay. on a Sunday and allow multiple people to come through and be a part. Mm. All right, so uh, this is what we're doing and you mm. can do exactly the same thing because people need to worship. Yes. People need yes. to come together. That's the power of the yes. covenant relationship of who we are. Amen. There's nothing like praising and worshiping the Lord. I mean, even here in the studio, when Mike gets going, mm. it's like, wow, we're here. It's so exactly. awesome. We're in the presence of yeah. the Lord. Yeah. We Atmosphere. are ready. It's wonderful. Okay. So I want to encourage you, get mm. to church on Sunday. Mm. All right. And become a part of that. Now, tonight, we we ending uh, September. We're crossing over into opulent October. We've declared that God's favor, God's blessing, God's goodness is coming on your life. Yes. Amen. In a supernatural way. And I want you, we started and we've spoken this week. And we've had just a, a few moments where we've been talking. And we've been sharing around certain things that pertaining to financial principles. I want you to understand, tonight we're going to talk a little bit further. Last night you said we needed to carry on. If you're still in agreement, type there, hashtag, carry on. <laughs> All right, I want to know, are you in agreement with me to carry on? Because we want to carry on with this topic. We want to talk about it. We want to bring wisdom and insight into your lives. Remember, in the natural, the seed waits for the season. But in the supernatural... Your season is waiting for your seed. In other words, when you sow, it automatically becomes your season. Hallelujah. When you sow, you bring your season into pass. And tonight, we're going to do something special before tonight's out. We're going to have an opportunity to sow an offering to invite our season of Come opulent on. October to start yes. tonight. That's, that, that's what I felt we needed to do before tonight's out, Pastor Nikki. And we need to get a seed ready to put it in the ground. And there's going to come a moment where we're going to do that together as churches, as ministries, as uh, people all across the nations of the world. We're going to have a mass opportunity yeah. in a few moments where we are going to sow a seed and then we're going to break bread together and we're going to receive the cup and the bread, and we're going to commission October to be blessed, to be favored, favored yes. and just to see the prosperity Hallelujah. of God come on our lives and every single one of you that have walked this journey of 196 days already, every single day. And uh, I'm just so excited about that. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking a little bit tonight. If you say carry on, we'll carry on. Come on, I need more of you. If you're saying carry on, we want, to, we, 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 we want to carry on. Okay, because we want to talk and we want to answer questions. But just before we do, I want us to worship, Mike. And I want us to, yes, set the to just set the platform. Yes, we're going to yeah. sing and worship just with one song. And we're going to prepare the heart of God to come and minister to us. We're going to take questions and we're going to talk more about the tithe. Today we're going to try and get a little bit further in the tithe and we're going to be talking a lot of detail pertaining to it. All right? So that's what we're going to be focusing on. We don't know where it's going tomorrow just yet, but we're going to go on until we have answered every question. If you're ready for what God's going to say to you tonight as a family, as a mom, as a dad, as a child, 
I want you to receive the word of the Lord as we share around these principles of giving tonight. But uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you, take us right now and let's worship him. Let's, let's just come before the Lord and let's say, Lord, here I am. Here's my heart. I'm ready for what you have for us. So come on, let's worship him together. Oh, oh Lord, here's my heart. Oh, we sing how wonderful you are. You're so good to me. Of 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, release your word, your presence. And Lord, speak to us with your wisdom. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Mike. Wow. You know, he's such a great God, but yet he cares for you and for me. He has our well-being yes. in His mind. Yeah. And I was thinking about that this morning and I thought that's a great place for us to start. Yes. Is this. You know, people have argued, people have criticized, people have a lot to say as soon as you talk about money. And I just decided this week we're talking about it. Whether people criticize, whether they argue or not, after 196 days, we have the right, I believe, to be able to share some principles with you. From God's perspective. From God's perspective. Because He cares for you. Yes. 
He wants he to bless you. Me so much. Yes. I mean, I'm thinking of that, that scripture that says, What father, when his son asked for bread, yes. would give him a stone? Yes. Yeah. How much True. more does your father who loves you in heaven mm. understand this? He has your well being at heart. Mm. God wants to bless you. Yes. But when it comes to the area of financial blessing, He's paid the price on Calvary. He is, he's done what he said he would do, that we can walk in victory in every area of our lives, body, soul, spirit, finances, every area is going to be blessed because of what he's done on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And so tonight, I want us to get back to the tithe. I want us to talk a little bit more. Pastor Nikki, Lillian, there were just so many questions that came and uh, people are asking us, yes, so many of you saying, please carry on, carry on, carry on. If you want us to carry on, just say carry on <laughs> and we're going to carry on. But on the Facebook feed right now, if there's a question, now we're going to keep the questions pertaining to the time. All right, it's very important, and I want you to understand this. We're focusing on the tithe. If there are any questions that you have pertaining to the tithe that we have not yet answered, we have a list of them already. We're going to attempt to go through, yeah. and we've got just on an hour. We want to try and get as many questions in as we can, and we're going to share around these questions. And I want to ask you, wherever you are, I want to ask you just to pose those questions right now. Go to the Facebook feed, yeah. myfaith.tv, and ask the questions now, okay? It's open platform for you to ask those questions. We're going to read them. If you pick up any good ones there, guys, please hold them as a panel, and we are going to just get going in what <laughs> God has for us, okay? Let's kick off. Russian asks the question, Pastor Nikki. Is it possible to pray for a release in my finances? It feels like my return is stuck. All right, what would you say to Roshan? <laughs> yeah, well, money works in, obviously, God knows our needs. Yes. Yeah. And we can ask whatever we want, and He will give it unto us, you know. But I firmly believe that finances works in the realm of giving and of receiving. I, I can't really find a scripture that says pray for money. It says you'll supply your needs. But that's, that's about that. Yeah, the yeah. rest of the Bible is given, it shall be given. It's an action to giving. Yes. That's right. and, and miracles as well is not in the realm of finances. Wisdom is, decision making is, good management is. Miracles is for deaf ears, blind eyes. Mm -hmm. So you have to get out of the realm of, I need a miracle in my finances into the realm of that's, blessings. That's very good. Where you can live successfully yeah. and live in the realm of blessings we can't live from miracle to miracle yeah. Yeah. we have to live in the blessings of god what you were saying right. the abundant blessings of god so yes we do pray lord send us a breakthrough send us finances but if i don't put seed in the ground if i don't have my tithes ready i really don't have that prayer backing you know i have to do something faith Thank without you. works mm -hmm. is dead mm -hmm. so like i said i can't really find a scripture in the bible that says pray for money yeah you yeah. have to do something. And wouldn't a lot of it yeah. have to do with practical wisdom as well? Because I Absolutely. find a lot of times people kind of just think if I just do these principles, then everything is going to come fine with my finances when they're actually getting into debt or they're not wise with the way you're spending. Absolutely. So, you know, when there's foolishness in or, or bad stewardship in our finances, we can't just expect, you know, a quick fix either. So I think everything goes hand in hand. Just the Absolutely. same as if you believe in God for divine health, you're not purposefully going to go and, uh, you know, do things that are going to compromise your health. You know what I mean? You're going to eat properly. You're going to exercise properly. You're going to do things that take care of your body. Yes. You don't purposely go out and just mishandle your body. Yes. So just the same when it comes to our finances. You, we have to be proper stewards of our finances. We have to be wise mm -hmm. in the handling of our day-to-day -day finances. There must be budgets put in place. We yes. must be wise with, with um, not getting ourselves into debt or getting all the credit cards or, you know, there's there's day-to-day -day wisdom, practical wisdom with our finances that has to be in place. And when we apply the Word of God and the principles of God to it, then the miraculous is is 
you know, it's going to happen. The supernatural blessing of God does happen. But I really think, Andre, that is so important to understand that people can't just get themselves into debt and then just want a quick fix from God and think, now if I suddenly tithe, everything's going to come right. It doesn't yes. come by falling under the power. That's right. Maybe I should just add. Yeah, yeah. And Pastor Andre and, and all the viewers just hear my heart, you know. If prayer is the answer for financial miracles, then every intercessor on this planet should be multi-millionaires or billionaires. And most of the intercessors I know doesn't even have jobs. And so f prayer doesn't, uh, prayer works. Mm -hmm. But in the realm of finances, there's other principles that, uh, that needs to work with prayer, if that makes sense. You know? In order for your financial well-being to move to another level, there is only one thing that governs it, and that is the principle of seed time and harvest. Without the principle of seed time and harvest operating in your life, you will never be able to grow. And I want to talk about that a little bit tonight because that's an important thing. You see, um, Hilton here asks a question. It says, my gross salary is 12,000, but because of loans and deductions, all I get out is 1,000. So if I had to tithe, so I tithe on the 1,000. If I tithe on the gross, I would not have enough to cover Look even the 10%. Mm. Please advise. Hilton, here's the problem. The problem is you've got yourself into debt. Yeah. You've got yourself into a very difficult financial position and you are using your debt, your encumbered debt. Yeah that you are taking from what is rightfully God's to service your debt, okay? Now, Pastor Nikki, we're going to deal with debt in the next day or two or next week, yeah. all right? So, Hilton, I want to defer this question until you've heard what we deal with pertaining to debt in the next week. That's good. All right, because it's a very important thing that we want to teach you. The key principle for you is to get out of debt. Mm. The key here is that we can't get ourselves into trouble and then expect God to bail us out. Yeah. We make the man decision yes. to get into debt. And then we want a supernatural outcome from God to get out of it. And then mm. just to get back in again. And then just to go yes. back into it again. Correct. It's like a vicious circle that we find ourselves in. And we're going to talk about that in detail. And once you have an understanding of that, I believe you'll have an understanding of this question to be able to answer it. Lawrence asked this question. says, how do pastors get paid? Do they get paid by more and more tithes received? Lawrence, every church stands accountable themselves as their leadership and their team and their structure. I do not know legally how your ministry is structured, uh, the church you're referring to. But every church has what is called a leadership team, a finance board, someone that would make those decisions. The key here is that the pastor is not in charge of the finances in totality, that he gets people around him with wisdom and that he structures the ministry correctly. The problem here, Pastor Nikki, is when pastors think they are the ministry. Yeah. All right. And when they put themselves in a position where they run their own private bank accounts as the church bank account, mm, sure. that's a no-no. Yeah, All, right. All right. That is not legal. Yeah. All right. Make sure that the church you go to is incorporated properly. It is a registered institution with the nation, wherever you are, whatever country you're in. All right. In, in South Africa, they, they have to be registered as an NPC. There's, there's certain ways that churches have to be registered. All right? Make sure that your ministry is registered correctly. So that question I can't answer because that is a local decision by what is paid to the man of God comes from an income and a budget of a local church. All right? So I wanted to just share that with you. Okay? Now, Patricia says, May I tithe from the funeral insurance claim? Okay, may I tithe from that? Patricia, I want to on answer this question again. If money comes to you, however it comes, your heart needs to be, God, I want to tithe on it. 
That to me is the key. It's not about is this an insurance claim or a funeral claim or whatever. If money comes to you from it's whatever income. source, yes. it is called income. And the Bible says bring all the tithe, the tenth of the, the, tenth of the total income, income that yes. comes to you. Mm. All right? <clears throat> That's what you need to tithe on. And that question is for everybody out there. Mm. Because so many questions are being asked and people are saying, well, you know, um, uh, do I tithe on this? Do I tithe on that? You, you know, Jen, being in business, and we're going to talk about businesses in just a few moments because I want to get through some of these other questions quickly. Being in business, there's a way to tithe and we're going to talk about that. But as an individual, all you have to do is, am I blessed with this? Is this extra? Is this an income to me? Correct. If it is an income, then I want to honor God Amen. with that tithe Thank you, and Father. I want to bring it to Him it and say, Lord, you you've done it this way. I have seen when we have been faithful tithers all these years, we've seen checks come in the mail. Yes. We've seen avenues, a, a, we avenues that we could not have yes. imagined yes. that just God blessed us yes. as a family. It's supernatural. All right? Yeah. And what you have to do is you have to break of that and give Him the tithe. Is, yes. is that what would you want to add to I agree there? 100%. Whatever the, um, the resource or the income source is, whether it's a policy, in a state, whatever, make sure you tithe of that. Yeah. God has opened that door for you. God has given you favor to have that policy paid out or whatever. And just receive it, give your tithe, and you will always have an open door. For me, it's always about the open door. Yeah. You know, if, even if you get a bonus, like at your workplace, you get a performance bonus or 13th check, whatever, tithe from that because it enables next year to happen the same. So right. you get you create an open door for that avenue to come in. So if I sow, let's use an example of a bonus that comes in. Yeah. I take that bonus. I sow 10% from that. Uh, that enables me that next year, same time, I can have another bonus. Yeah. That's right. If I block right. that thing. I always tell my staff, if you get a bonus, a 13th check or whatever, tithe from that. Because it enables you next That's right. year come on. to have another bonus. Yeah. Yeah. You're the only one that blocks it. Yeah. You know, and so... Whatever, doesn't if it's ten rand, ten dollars, whatever, you make sure one dollar goes to the Lord. That's it. Yeah. Non negotiable. You, you know, one of the things when I've been teaching on tithing, one of the things that has always blessed me, and uh, an example that I've always used is a gentleman came up once to me and he said these words. He said, Pastor, would you pray with me? I can't afford to tithe anymore. I said, What do you mean? He said, He said, I used to be able to tithe. Mm. But now, uh, I can't afford to tithe. I said, explain this to me. He said, well, I used to earn a thousand rand a month. And I could easily take 10% and tithe. Now, I'm earning 10,000. Mm. I can't afford to tithe. Now, here's the problem. You see, he never grew with his, with his giving. As he got more and more, he started to use the more and more and not grow with your giving. You see, it's the Consistent same percentage yes. and it has to go right through. So I said, would you pray with me? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll pray with you. I said, are you sure you want me to pray? He said, please pray with me. So I said, let's pray. So I took him by the hand and, I, and he closed his eyes like this and, and he thought I'm going to pray this very supernatural prayer. <laughs> and all I said was this. I said, Lord, you hear the cry of the man's heart. He wants to be a tither. I ask, will you reduce his salary mm. with immediate effect back to 1,000 rand yeah, that he can be a oh tither God. once again? Sure. Yeah. And he stops and he opens his eyes. He says, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying for you. Yeah, but you're praying a reduction on my salary. I said, I would rather you earn 1,000 rand and tithe then earn 10,000 and not tithe. Yes, rather be obedient. Rather be obedient. Because what he doesn't understand is that the thousand rand tithe principle is what God began to yeah. see as an increase in his life as he gave his offerings over and above that. God supernaturally blessed him and suddenly he stops giving to God. Here's the principle. Don't ever stop your source. Don't ever stop the principle in the area of your giving 
where you, and, and, and you think back in an area of your life, I guarantee you every single one of you will get to a point where suddenly you stop tithing yeah. Yeah. and everything started going yeah. wrong. Okay, it all yeah. just started going, it all started going mixed up. Why? Because you, were consistent. you were not consistent. Yeah. It was the tithing that got you to that point. Yes, it was the tithing that opened that window of heaven over your life. It was the tithing that placed that hedge of protection around you. And then you suddenly think it's all about me and it's no longer about God. That's the downfall. That's the problem area. Don't ever get there. All right? Always be at the place where you are always in a constant position of God I'm bringing to the storehouse the goodness God I'm bringing my tenth yeah. into the storehouse so I just want to quickly jump in here because I'm seeing all the questions that are coming right. at the same time um, and a lot of people have said what if now we didn't know about this and now there's debt how do we then make right but we we are going to touch on we're going to speak about in later programs about debt and how do we tithe even when we are swallowed in debt but we want to make our way out of it we definitely have got personal testimonies on that as well so we're definitely going to get to that but please don't feel that so overwhelmed I didn't know now it's too late it doesn't work like that with the kingdom of God God is a good God yes. and at any time where you've seen the truth and you want to make a change all you do is repent that's what the word says you change your mind and you start to do things the way that he has so any income again that's that right. comes you take a percentage of that income and you give you just start with what you have Start with where you are. You don't have to start with a blank sheet. You just start with what you have. And you'll see that yes. supernaturally, God somehow brings the money in so that you can get out of that debt and you can get to a place of financial freedom. It's about yeah. the heart. That's right. Yes. It's absolutely That's right. about the heart. You know, when I tell people as well that get saved on a Sunday, you know, all of a sudden now they have to tithe. They've never even heard about that. Correct. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't expect from a person doesn't have knowledge or understanding on tithing now next Sunday you must bring 10 suddenly it'd be right yeah it's like a person who, who had to quit or who gets saved and now he's trying to get rid of of smoking yes. some people get delivered instantaneously yes it's a miracle other people you know it's from 30 cigarettes through. a day to 20 yeah. 10 5 eventually they get offered yeah the same with tithe but this is what I want to say let your heart be so true to God to say I'm going to start Yes. That's right. Even if you start right. with 1%, yes, it's not the full yes. tithe, but you start with saying, this is my, my tithe. Yes, it's 1%, but next month will be 2 yeah. and 3 because your heart is right you and start. your focus yes. on that. Yes. Once you focus where the attention flows, the power flows. Yes. Get the attention right, get the order right in your finances and start somewhere. Just like Pastor Jane said, start somewhere. Yes begin and God's going to cause money to come this year, this month to you to test you. Yeah. Right. I said to them, right. I asked right. him this, why yeah. did you put Malachi 3 verse 10 and 11, you know, yes. 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Why did you put it one chapter away from, from the, the New, New Testament? Testament? It would have made my job easier to explain. <laughs> exactly. This is New Testament. And God said to me, he says, it's all about the test. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just the yeah. test of the heart. Because he says that, test yeah. me now. Test me in yeah. this and prove me in this. And He will open the windows of heaven for you. So just start somewhere. Amen. The next time somebody brings something to you, you take a 10% 10 10 of that and bring it to the house of God. Yeah. And you'll see how it will increase. Amen. Mo Moketis asks, do pensioners pay tithe? Absolutely. Any All right? income. Any form of income. Yes. If it is income coming into you, whether it's a pension or anything that is coming into you, you pay tithe on that. All right, very, very important. Now, uh, uh, Rihanna says, I have a non-profit that runs on donations. How do I tithe from it? Very simply, 10% of all of your donations that come in. Uh, Rihanna, I want you to understand, you take 10% of that and you sow it into other non-profit entities, That's other good. ministries, That's other churches. Places where you believe your non-profit is spiritually fed. Let me give you an example. Us as Faith Broadcasting Network, we have great ministries that we respect. We have ministries that we sow into, we tithe, and we receive the blessing of those ministries on our life as a 
non-profit ministry, this non-profit, Faith Broadcasting Network. What do we do? We give. We give to men of God, uh, churches, their ministries. We sow to other organizations. We sow into mega ministries all around the world. Where I ever see an anointing on a ministry and I say, Lord, I want that anointing on this ministry. We sow into it. All right, so understand that. Then we also have our, our, our benevolent fund. We also have our income that we receive that goes into faith cares. And we give and we sow a lot into the poor. And uh, that's a different form of giving. And then we also plant seed. That's the beautiful thing, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in the days that lie ahead also, where we take seed and we plant it over and above the tithe, mm -hmm. over and above the 10%. We give it as an organization because we want to see the blessing of God come on this organization. And this exactly the same for you. Won't you just, because I was just thinking of Rihanna and her question now as well. Won't you re mention again, you spoke about those three things. I know that for you it's probably difficult, some people it's difficult to do that straight away. But how you spoke about every income that comes into your non-profit, whatever income comes in, then immediately 10% went aside into a seed account to use for a tithing and 10% went in for your savings, savings and 10% remember uh, for your giving. Do you want to just reiterate that? The thing is every church has to establish for themselves how they want to do it. Right. I'm telling you how we do it. Right. Okay, and you go before God as a leadership and as a church, as an organization, non-profit organization. What we did is we run our books on 70%. 70% of everything that comes in is how we operate. 30%, 10% goes into our savings to help us for when we need certain things. 10% goes in as our giving account to be able to give and be a blessing. And 10% goes as our tithe account. All right, so we tithe 10% and we give 10%, which is 20% off every single rand or every single dollar that comes in. That's how we do it. And then we take 10% of that and we put it into savings as well to keep it for those times. We need equipment. We need an emergency fund Absolutely. to be able to do something. Yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's been good steward of what God has entrusted to you. So that's what you need to, you need to do. So, so as an NGO, you don't ever... Uh, listen, can I, can I say this? And, and I want to try and paint this picture very clearly to you as a ministry. Don't tithe downhill um, tithe upwards. uphill come on okay let me explain That's what i mean on, by right? it okay this is a key for every minister every man of god out there every ministry every ngo whoever you are the problem is mm -hmm. pastor nikki let me say that let me give an example if we as a ministry saw a need of a little church down the road with 50 people mm -hmm. and we gave to them we would be sowing downhill. Yeah. In other words, I'm not disputing the little church. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But if that little church has never given, if that little church is a swamp, if that little church is not, is not doing anything and not shaking Same anything, uh, what am I doing? Now all they are is a benevolent to me. In other words, I'm trying to help them. I must never give because I'm trying to help. There's a big difference. When I give because I'm trying to help, that is when I give to the poor. That is when I give, and we give to places like that, all right? But that is not counted as my seed, my increase. I want to tithe uphill. In other words, I want the anointing of supernatural abundance to come on this ministry. So I look in the world for ministries that are powerful. For ministries that are carrying the anointing of the supernatural. Yes. For it's ministries awesome. that, are, that are operating in like what we are doing. For ministries that are exploding around the world, that have a world vision. I, I, I love looking at ministries that are global ministries. That we can get behind, that we can support. When I look for a ministry where to give, and I'm, this is a key for every NGO out there and every church and every pastor. I look for a ministry that is winning souls. Yes. First and That's foremost. That's the very first thing. Yes. The first thing I do Amen. is I look, are you winning souls? Yes. If you don't have a soul count, if you're not winning people to Jesus as a ministry, I don't want to give to you. 
because mm. my seed is just going into empty ground. Yes. I want my seed to go into ground that is multiplying. Amen. The second thing, my seed must go further. So when I give to you as an organization, are you giving. a giving organization? Yes. Those are two important keys that I look for. And then I look and I say, Lord, what is the anointing on that mm -hmm. ministry? Because when I plant my seed, and tonight we're going to plant our seed into this ministry and into every other church out there. Yeah. But when I plant my seed into that ministry, I want that anointing of that ministry to come on me. Amen. So if it's an evangelistic ministry, I want the anointing of souls to come on me. Yes. If it's a Word supernatural thanks. ministry moving in the supernatural, I want the healing power of God to operate through Faith Broadcasting Amen. Network. If it's a faith-based ministry like Brother Kenneth and Gloria Copeland or, or any other mega yeah. uh, ministry that moves in faith all over the world, Lord, I want the faith of that ministry to be upon my life. So when I plant my seed, when I sow my seed, I receive that anointing on my life. That's the biblical that's principle of how I operate. Yeah. And that's called sowing up. Yes. Okay, into good ground. Now there are times where you have to help the small church down the road. There are times when you have to help the poor. There are times when you have to do the soup kitchen and feed and all of that. But that's out of benevolence. All right? And the Bible says, for that you will be loaning to God. In other words, if I give a million in to help somebody, I will only get the million back. And I, I won't forget the other day, there was a, when I say the other day, a few years ago, <laughs> all right, because a day is like a thousand yeah, yeah, years yeah. in the eyes of God <laughs> in my book. But I, I'll never forget, there was a struggling church mm -hmm. ministry that was battling, and they had a Christian school. And I'll never forget the school had the option to buy a piece of land that would house their future. And I looked at the school and I looked at the pastor and I thought, Lord, these are great people. These are loving people. These are people with a passion for the things of you. And Lord, they're going to be nation shakers one day. They've just, they're just battling in this area to be able to break through in this thing financially. And I looked at that and I felt the Lord say, why don't you be a part of this particular purchasing of this land? And I went and I spoke to our team and I said, guys, we've got the money. We need our own building. We yeah. need to do what we're doing yeah. at River Park and at the Great Faith Dome. And I said, let us just be obedient. Let us take and let us help them to acquire this land. And we took the money, and we helped acquire the land for them. I'll never forget. It was about five years later. I'd almost forgotten about it. And five years later, they came back to us, and they said, we're on our feet. God has done wow. all of this. It's amazing. You helped us. We would never have got this massive piece of ground. They're building this Christian school on it. They, they're doing everything on it. Absolutely amazing. They've just gone to another level. Okay, students have signed up. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And they wrote us a check out and they sewed back to us wow. what we wow. had given them to help acquire the land. Wow. And I thought to myself, that is loaning to God. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. All right, when you loan to God, and you help other ministries like that, God will always give it yes. back to you. Yes. All right? Very different form of giving. Okay? There's not multiplication on that. All there is is getting back what you loaned to God. That's good. And how you helped another ministry. Okay? So, so I wanted to share that with you because it's, 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 it's very important, uh, all of these things. Well, Sandra, here's a question um, mm. from Mapula. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she says, I sold my house. Uh, it's, is it possible for me to use the tithe of that money for a charity project and not taking it to the church? Now, we have answered this question over and over again. Maybe just... Uh, Mapula. Uh, Mapula, huh? yeah. Yeah. What Mapula. does the word say? The word says you bring the tithe Only into the storehouse. To the storehouse. Yes. 
All right? Your tithe goes into the place where you are spiritually fed. I've just spoken to you about being spiritually fed as an organization. Mm -hmm. There are men that speak into our lives mm -hmm. as great men of God around the world. One of them will be on air with us on Tuesday, Jerry Savelle. Another one, Kenneth Copeland. I, I can name them to you. Great men of God that are a blessing, that have thriving ministries. Mm -hmm. And the reason we are a thriving ministry is because we sow into their ministries. Mm -hmm. But as an individual. But as an individual, you come into the local church. Yes. All right? The, the tithe comes to the local church or the storehouse, the place where you are spiritually fed. Now, I know there are people all over the world that don't have a local church because you stay so rural. Mm -hmm. You can't get to a local church. And a TV network like this could be your local church. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Mm -hmm. That's your decision. That's what you make. Mm -hmm. But if you on a Sunday go to a local church, mm -hmm. that's where your tithe goes. Yeah. It does not go to help the NGO down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want to bring clarity to that again. If you feel to help the NGO down the road, you do that over and above your tithe. So I hope that paints the picture Absolutely. very clear. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have we got other questions, guys? Oh, yeah, there's plenty. Sorry. Yeah, go. Okay, so um, Christo said, when I sell something that I have, like a boat, for example, do I tithe on the full amount that I got for that boat or just the profit? Okay. Let's talk about a boat, a car, a house. Mm -hmm. Any asset. An asset, Okay, yeah. let's talk about an asset, because we're talking. All right? Now, this is what I live. This is what we do. Okay? If you buy a motor car for... 20,000 rand, let's just use a figure, and you sell that motor car for 30,000 rand. Later on, you say, well, how do motor cars increase? When God's blessing is on your life, everything will increase under you. That's what God says. Okay? Understand this. The longer you go with God, you will, you will have an opportunity to increase. Now, here's the thing. When you buy and sell that car, the difference between the purchase and the sale price, you tithe on. You tithe on that portion, on that element. Jenny and I, we, we've kind of gone a different level because we will, we will buy something cash, we will do it cash and whatever, and when I sell it cash, I just want to tithe. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am, okay? It's not about a law, it's about a principle That's good. of being a giver. Yeah. So God takes you to another level all right, but what is an expectant level for you? Well, what did you pay for that? And what are you selling it for? Let's talk about your house. You buy a home for 100,000 rand. You say, well, you can't do that, but I'm just going to use a figure. Mm -hmm. And you sell the home for 120,000. There is 20,000, what we call profit on the home. Profit you have made 20,000. That is the portion you tithe on. All right? If you have paid that home off, if you've paid the 100,000 off and you sell it for 120,000, it's up to you. If you want to tithe 10% on everything that you sell that home for, you're welcome to. You're welcome to. It's not, that is not a problem at all. All right? God will move you into that level if it's paid off. But if you owe money on that house and there is debt and you owe the bank and you settle the amount of the bank, you can tithe on the difference. There is a, a place that is giving you a flexibility where God says, okay, tithe on the gap, tithe on the profit of it. That's good. All right? So let's talk about business at this point. That's good. Okay? Because I, I see, it kind of I see a, a, a lot business. of people are asking uh, for the business advice yeah. and saying, please, Tell us how we tithe on our business. Yes. And I want to try and paint this picture as clear to you as possible. This is how we have lived. This is what we have done. And this is the principle, I believe, that business people need to operate by. Through a financial year, you have income and you have expense. Mm. If you were to buy this cup, or let me use my phone. It's a better valuable. Let's say my telephone is a thousand rand. Okay, I buy it at a thousand rand, 
and I'm now going to sell it to Pastor Nikki for 1,200. Mm -hmm. Andre's business has made 200 rand mm -hmm. profit. Mm -hmm. That's what I need a tithe on. Correct. Otherwise, we'll the profit, yourself. or I will bankrupt my business. Mm -hmm. I can't tithe on the 1,200, Pastor Nikki, because that would be 120 rand mm. that I would need to give, but the item only cost uh, uh, 1,000 yeah. plus 120. I would only make 80 rand. Yeah. In other words, I would not have enough money for my business to survive. Mm. So I tithe on the difference between mm. my costs of my business and my profits of my business, okay, and what I make. Let me explain it this way. A business is very difficult to tithe on monthly. You need to tithe on a business annually. That's good. It's a much easier and better good. way to tithe. That's good advice. Don't tithe on your business monthly. If you, as Andre, draw a salary from your business, when Andre gets the money, Andre tithes on that amount monthly. Sure. Yes, that's for okay? you. That's for me. Are you Personally. understanding that? Mm. But as a business, that's you good. can't tithe on your business monthly because your months go into each other in a business period of one year. At the end of your financial year of your business, you have what is called profits, you have what is called losses, you have what is called your excess uh, profits that have been made in that calendar year, which you have to report to the IRS, to the receiver of revenue, to whatever name the tax entity is in your country. Mm. All right? You have to then pay tax on the profits. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem. Here's the, the lie. Every businessman knows. If I'm going to pay tax on profits, I'm going to try and diminish my profits. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So every businessman tries to get clever. And he says, let me increase my expenses to minimize my profits to because pay to pay less tax. Mm. Then their business slips through with minimal mm. profit and they've robbed from God. Mm -hmm. And you've robbed from God. And I've seen this happening in the, in the body of Christ. I, I look at business people all over. Yeah. And, and you see, when and, and understand this, God has given us a business anointing. That's who Jen and I are. This is what we do. We operate in business, but we operate in ministry as well. And the Lord spoke to me 25 years ago. He said, Andre, understand this. My business people are robbing me because they're trying to inflate their costs yeah. to minimize their profits for tax. And they are not giving me what they should be giving me in honor of their business. And I began to study and look into this. There is a businessman that um, I, I'm just going to refrain from a name that we know personally that is in our fold and, uh, and we work closely with. This businessman, every single year, without fail, at the end of their financial year, has made a profit. And how do I know that? Because every single year, our ministry gets the check of 10% of the profit. Yeah. And let me just tell you, that check can go into big six-figure, seven-figure digits because they have made the decision that they would not try and increase their expenses to minimize their tax. They would rather pay the tax on the profit to honor God and say, God, I'm bringing you my first fruits, my tithe as a business. So do they pay tithe after they pay the tax? No, they pay tithe well, on the profit. So, so, so let, me, let me explain it this way. Their business does 10 million in, um, in costs and 15 million in turnover. They have made 5 million profit. Right. 5 million profit. They have to pay tax on 5 million. Mm -hmm. What they do, number one, is they write a check out for 500,000 to the ministry. The tithe. Sure. The tithe. Full right. tithe. The full tithe off the top. Then their business <laughs> has to pay 21% tax or 
27% tax or 30%, depending on whatever tax bracket they're in, they have to pay that. But do you know what? Every year, God keeps increasing them. Yes. Every year, there is more and more. It is supernatural. Why? Because they are honoring God with their tax. Well, give Caesar what's due to Caesar and honoring God with their time. Okay, so now Glynis also in this whole thing um, with like with your like with the business as right. well as she says um, even the sale of property when there is an existing bond pay that the has bond to be repaid. If there is a bond it means you have been financed on that property. Mm. In other words you did not pay cash for your house. Mm. So therefore your bond is always less than the purchase price of your house. Okay? So that's one way to always tell. So if your bond, your bond is always less than the purchase price of your house, mm -hmm. always remember as a family, what did you pay for that house? Mm. All right? If you paid a million rand for that house and you sell it for 1.1 million, there is 100,000 profit, profit that correct. you have made on that house. Mm. Yes, you've paid interest on it. Yes, you've done all of that. You don't put all your expenses into that. All you do is you say, Lord, you have honored me. You have created wealth in this home. For the sale, that yes. I bought for a hundred thousand and I've sold it yes. for 1.1 million. Yeah. I've made a hundred thousand. Ten thousand comes to God. That's good. Yeah. Between the purchase price of your house and the sale price That's of your good, house. Yeah. You know, Pastor Nikki, I was telling you privately one or two of these stories, but I, I want you to understand this. And we've got so much to talk about, and we might have to go into tomorrow. But Jenny and I, when our children were born, we chose to invest in property for them. That was our endowment policy plan for their lives. And so, so what we did was, within the first month of each of them being born, we bought each of them a house. That was something we wanted to do. Now, we didn't have the cash flow to do that. So what I did was I raised the money in, in a mortgage, a loan. I went and, I, and I, then I got a tenant into the house to pay the loan. That's business. That's a decision. This is now years and years ago. And what we would do is we would see that the mortgage was paid by the tenant. Mm -hmm. So yes, in a sense, I was in debt. But I always had the value in the house. Mm. Right. While okay? you had a tenant. While I had a tenant, the debt was being paid by the tenant. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Right. My goal was by the time my children graduate to be able to give them the house. Okay then they have their own property. That's wisdom. And that's what God says to yeah. us, is He says, he says mm. that the wealth of your descendants, you must be able to pass <laughs> down blessing yes. and prosperity. And that's what we did. And they could do with that home what they and wanted. And they could do with that home what they wanted when they graduated. My goal was to pay it off like in that. seven years. Yes. Mm. Because I read scripturally, that a seven-year debt needs to be expunged after seven years. So every goal I would set would be a seven-year goal to try and believe God to pay off that home for yeah. seven years. Now, here's the part I want to Very tell you. Good. Here's the part I want to tell you. <laughs> we got the house paid off. And then our lifestyle changed. Things changed. We relocated. And we found ourselves selling those homes. Correct. Okay? Now, this is what I want to tell you. When we sold the home, Jenny and I on each of the children's homes made so much profit from what we had bought sure. to what we had sold. Mm -hmm. And the joy for us to take the difference from what we had paid to what we had sold the house for, <laughs> we could take it and we tithed it mm -hmm. on their behalf. Now, you've got to understand, they're growing up. They, they're like one month old when we buy them the house. They're now seven years old, and we're selling their homes. Mm -hmm. And we're reinvesting it into other property for them to create a, a portfolio, a property for each Beautiful. and every one of them. Okay? But every time the money of the sale comes through, what do you do? You tithe on it. Because that was God's goodness. And I'll give you one example of just one house, just to show you. I'll never forget, it was years ago. I'm, I'm talking now, Jordan's 19, so um, what was that? 
19 years ago, the one house in particular. We picked it up for about 275,000 rand in those days. Mm -hmm. okay? 19 years ago. 19 years ago. That's nothing. When we sold that house, we sold it for just over 1.2 million. Wow. That was nearly a million profit <laughs> wow. on one house. Wow. Okay, one house. Now, what I want you to understand, do you know what a joy it was? Jordan, seven years old, doesn't even know this. But we could tithe for him, for his future. On behalf of him, we could take a hundred thousand rand tithe and tithe it sure. for him because of his blessing. And that fruit still remains. And that fruit remains. And this is what I want you to understand. Now, we could have not done anything. We could have kept it all. And I'm telling you something. We would not have what we have today because of that as a personal thing. Now, that's just, I'm talking from a personal side of what we did. And that's the principle I want to put out there to you. So business people, let's come back. Let's talk here about business because that's a house. And you guys must question me, please, if there's anything I'm not clear on. As a business, through the year, you do what you need to do. And when you get to the end of your financial year and you do your books and your auditor does your books, whatever is your profits of that year, whatever extra money you have made, don't try and hide it. Yes. Don't try and get it tax-free. Don't try and write it off as best you can and run out and buy a new boat and a new car and a new company, this and a company, that, just because the tax man, because your auditor, your auditor says, well, hide all your money. No, don't do that. Mm. Bring to God the honor. God, you have done this for me. Thank you. Here is my tithe. And you can write that tithe off. And when you sow that tithe, understand, when you give it into an NPC, they can give you a certificate. They can give you a, a receipt for it. You know it's going into good ground. You're legally allowed to do that. And you're planting seed for your next year financially as a business. Mm -hmm. If you want to take the rest of your profits and do things with them before taxes and whatever, that's up to you. Okay? But honor God with all your sufficiency. Amen. And the Bible says, you will never look back. You will be blessed. Amen. So are we still doing business questions? We can. Okay, so Justin gave this question. He said, if I receive a tender project for 150000 yeah. and I borrow 90000 to pay to pay the employees, must I tithe from the 150 or the 60 profit as I have to pay back the 90 to the bank? Again, it would be on the profit. It's You, you tithe on the yeah. profit, Justin. Mm -hmm. Is that Justin? Yes. It's okay, Justin, Justin you tithe on the profit. In other words, for you to do that tender cost you 90000 all right, that was your cost to fulfill that tender. You made 60,000 profit, you tithe on your profit. 6,000 goes to God. Okay? It's very simple. Simple, simple, simple. I think That's that, how you have to yeah, tithe on business. Just don't try to make it complicated. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't negotiate yeah. with yeah. God as if he's this, the tax man. Yeah. That's what yeah. people try and say. exactly yeah. what you're trying to say. We hide it here, we put it there. What, what, Listen, that, just deal with God. Simple. Daisy's asking that exact question yeah. right here. Look there. Daisy just says, as a business, all of our expenses come off the profits. So how do we work out the tithe? Okay, Daisy, what I want to challenge you with, and, and this is for every businessman, because every business person does this. You, 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 you try and you hide your expenses, which is legal. It's not illegal. It's totally legal your motor car payments, whatever, for your company, car, and all of that, you write all that off. What you need to do, Daisy, is you need to say, Lord, how much am I costing this company? It's your own company. As a business person, how much am I costing? In other words, what is my cost to company? There's a figure. You draw a salary over and above that to survive for your groceries, for your pocket money, to go to movies, to do whatever you want to do. That is a cost to company. That's what you tithe on. Mm. What you draw as an individual out of your company, Daisy, you tithe on it. Mm. 
Okay, very important. So Daisy tithes, number one, as an individual, as an individual every to month. Local church. Yes. To the local church yes. every single month. From his salary. But at the end of the financial year, Daisy, there is profits that you have made from your company. And there's bigger amounts. And then you honor God with your sufficiency. Yeah. And you bring before him and you say, Lord, you have blessed my business. Thank you. Yeah. And also Here profit. is the tithe. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing it to you once a year. Yeah. If every business did this, yeah. the church would never have lack. Yes. Correct. The reason the churches and the have lack would be blessed. and the businesses would be blessed. Yes. Listen to me. The reason the churches have lack is because people are not tithing like they should. Mm -hmm. They're not bringing. That's why. The, that's why. Go and go and read. Just quickly. Yeah. Get get back to um, um, Malachi, Malachi three. three. Malachi 3, I, I want to go to verse 11. I want to show you from verse 11. I can, I can recite it, but I want you to see verse 11. Look, look, look at this. Uh, verse 12, sorry, verse 12. All and nations. all the nations shall call you happy and blessed, for you shall be a land of I'll delight, delight no, says the yeah. Lord of hosts. Mm. What does that mean? People are going to look at you. Mm. As a church, mm. people are going to look at you as a ministry. People are going to look at, at you as business. an individual, look at you as a business. People are going to look and say, wow, what are you doing right? Yes. Mm. Come on. We have this business person in our church every year. They are blessed beyond measure. They just go through the moon mm. with income every year. It's like every idea they get just prospers. Mm. And I say, God, what is it? And God says, Andre, every single year without fail, that tithe check comes. Every year, it's the exact amount. And it's to the exact amount. So, so we know exactly as a, as a ministry what their yeah. profit was for the year. Mm. Because it's 10% of the total profits for the whole year. Mm. And that's where that scripture is in verse 12, where it says, and, and, and the Lord and all nations shall call you happy and blessed. Why? Because you shall be a land of delight. Why? Because of the blessing of God over you. Mm. Mm. That's what you will become. You will become a vision of God's goodness. People will look at you and say, Andre, what is it? Jenny, what is it? Nikki, what is it? Lillian, what is it? And everything will change. Yes. Mm. Because people will see, if you can do this, yes. I can do it. Yes. Mm. And you know what? God's got no favorites. No. He's, not a respecter. He's not a respecter of persons. No. Mm. And that's why every single one of you that are, that are part, putting these comments in, every one of you that want to step into your opulent October, I want you to understand that God has got this for you. All He's wanting is for a change to come in your heart, a change to come in your mind where you say, Lord, I'm getting my house in order. I'm getting my business in order. I'm getting my church in order. You know, there are churches that have never, ever given in their life and then they wonder why they never have. Yeah. Exactly. And they wonder why they stay a little church, 20 people, 30. Now, I'm not, I'm not criticizing little churches. But what I'm saying is, is your church has to grow. Yeah. If the presence of God is in your church, no matter where you are, prosperity has to come. And God has to bless you in every area. And pastor, I challenge you to be a tither. Trust I challenge you to be a giver as a, as a church. You say, where must we give? Faith Broadcasting Network's a good place to start. Because this is a network that's reaching nations. So what does that mean? Remember I spoke about the anointing of God coming upon you? If you want your church to move from just being a little suburban church to suddenly being a city church, to suddenly being reaching a, a region, a nation, a, 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 an area, a state, wherever, then you've got to tithe into something that's bigger than you. You've got to bring it into something that's bigger than you. Remember, that is not an individual, that is a church or a ministry. And, and, and yes, the, yes the, the saddest part of everything is, is if we look at our list of our givers into this ministry, and it's not that we do it for any other reason, but how few churches so. Correct. Yes. It's all individuals that are giving every month to sustain us and help us and do what God has called us to do. And, and what I've said is I've, I've realized, I've said, God, this is amazing because we're giving out. We're doing more. We're sowing into mega ministries all over the world. And Lord, you just keep blessing us. But my heart cries for the other churches down the road that just have never learned to be a giving church. That's why the church you go to, make sure they're giving. Make sure they're sowing. 
the business that you're involved with, make sure you are a giving business. Now, one of the questions I saw came up and I can't find it anymore, but we've got three directors from different churches and yes, believe different they. things. Yeah. Okay, and believe different things and we're not all givers. What do we do in our business? Well, well let me first tell you, uh, double check your decision sometimes to be unequally yoked. Okay, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. But maybe you went into business and, and you're in, you're committed now. You can't, you can't get out. I, I, I've been in one situation once in my life where I was unequally yoked and I said, God, never again. Yeah. That the thing nearly destroyed me in one business endeavor that I, that I branched into. And, and my team know and my board know I will never get into business with anyone yeah. that is not born again. Mm. Yeah. That is not spirit filled because I can't operate in that realm financially. That, that, that faith, we have yeah. to operate in by faith if they're it's not born again. Yeah. And I had a brilliant business partner, great mind, great individual, but he just was not born again. And it just couldn't work. I had to separate and I had to uh, sell out and, 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 and leave that situation. You don't ever want to be unequally yoked. But if you are, listen, God will bless your third yeah. when you apply this principle to your third your third of shares that come from sure. that business god will bless you it's like a husband and a wife where one is is born again and the other's not that's good that and, was one and, of the and, questions and, and i know that's yeah. one of the questions yeah. always is is where a wife says well what do i do what do i do I, i'm born again i love the lord but my husband's not interested and he doesn't want darling to. let me speak to you sweetie pie listen to me <laughs> okay your husband gives you some money Something comes your way for groceries. Something comes your way to run the household. Uh, you might get pocket money from your husband, whatever. You, you, can, you can take of that and be a tither and watch what God will do for you. Remember, tithing is not about the amount. Tithing is about the principle. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you can come and tithe just 50 cents, one rand, and God will bless you. Why? Because of the principle. And, he, and you pray for your husband's salvation, but if he gives you 500 rand to go buy the groceries for the month, you take that 500 rand, you say, Lord, yes, 50 rand. I'm tithing on my 50. And Lord, I'm believing you as, as the mother of this house to take that 450 and to stretch it further on the groceries. Let me get to the, let me get to the, the, the places and let me see the specials. You see, we don't realize this. We don't realize when we walk down the aisles no, and you see something half price two for bargains. one and the bargains and all of that, that's <laughs> God's blessing on your life. Yes, mm -hmm. You've got to understand that. You've got to realize that. That's His goodness. Yes. And when you give your 50, I tell you, you'll find more bargains for your 450 will stretch further yes. than your oh, 500 yes. has ever stretched before. I don't know if you want to, our time is just ridiculously gone. <laughs> our time just disappears all the time. Can one tithe from an overdraft where there is no salary? No. Definitely not. Do not get into debt. Yeah. Do not get into debt for your tithe. Yeah. Do not get into debt for your tithe. <laughs> tithe from what you receive okay and when you do that in obedience to god the blessing of god will come yes hallelujah beautiful amen awesome teacher. all right oh, oh. Have, have we covered everything there's uh, so many questions. there is so, much more. There is so <laughs> much more there is so much more okay now I, I don't know if there's more questions we'll try and get through and see what what there is but i hope i hope this has been an opportunity for you. I hope it's been a way just to open your eyes, answer some questions. Because, Pastor Nikki, there's so many times I've needed to talk to someone and I've yes. had no one to talk to. Yes. Just bounce and, up. And that's what I've wanted these yeah. sessions to be. I've wanted yeah. them to be a time we can just share yes. with each other and just bounce off each other. Okay, so I'm so sorry, but can I squeeze one more in here? Just quickly for Rebecca. Um, she spoke about how, you know, when she received her salary, she tithed on that. And then she put money aside <coughs> for her savings or for a pension. Someone mentioned the same thing for the pension. So they first tithe off the salary, then they put them in the little pockets. And then when that thing comes to maturity, do they then have to go tithe again on it? Or is that double tithing? You know what? Where's your heart? 
What do you want to do? I, I don't like getting caught up in that type of question because <coughs> I've always said, Lord, for me, it's about increase. If yes. I'm getting to the point of my pension and I've been tithing on all the money I've been investing for my pension and my pension is coming to me, <coughs> it's going to be a choice that we're going to make at that point and say, Lord, you have so blessed us all these yes. years. I can trust you to bless me more. Yes. That's what the tithe is. It's still the tithe, just the opening up the, the windows the, the of heaven. The tithe is right. coming to God. Mm. And if I have to sum up everything about the tithe, mm. it's this. If I were, and I don't, have you got a note in your pocket? Mm. Have you got, I got no notes. No. I took my, anyone Noteless. got a note here quickly? Noteless. No one got a note, okay? I, 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 I want to share it this way. If, if we were, if this was a note, and I don't have a note with me right now, the tithe principle is very simply put, Lord, I'm taking off one-tenth, one-tenth, and I'm believing you to take these nine-tenths and stretch them way past. Yes. What that full... What that one-tenth would have been. Yeah. That's the principle mm. of the tithe. Do you trust your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind? In other words, is there a love relationship that you have with Him that says these words, and I want to pray, Doc, right now. I want us to Thank come Jesus. to this point and yeah. say this. Let's, let's pray. I, I want to come to this point and I want to just say this. Lord, I want my relationship with you mm. to be based on love, mm. first and foremost. Mm. Nothing else Jesus. but loving you. Yes. And when I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, Nothing else matters. Mm. Therefore, whatever you give me, Daddy, mm. I can just bring it back to you because it's not mine anyway, it's yours. And the more I bring to you of what you've entrusted to me, mm. the more you trust me. Yes. And the more you trust me, the more I bring to you. The more I bring to you, the more you trust me. And that's what this is about. It's about him trusting you. Trusting you with everything. And Father, tonight as we plant our seeds, Lord Jesus, this is a seed that is going to produce opulent October in our lives to Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. And we bring you the seed. Mm. And we come before you tonight. Mm. And we give it to you. Hallelujah. We lay it at your feet. And we say, we believe. Mm. We trust you. Mm. Thank you to take the seed and to multiply it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank Amen. you, God. Hallelujah. Now listen. I can't believe the time's run out like this. <laughs> I want you to get that seed in the ground tonight. Your opulent October seed. Of what you're positioning and what you believe in God for. We're going to talk more tomorrow night about the seed. And I'm just going to pick up wherever we left off. Because we're wanting this to help you. Mm. We're wanting this to grow in your life. And that's why it's not a... It's, it's, it's like... If I was sitting in front of you, this is how I would talk to you. Mm, That's what I've wanted exactly. it to be. Yes. To help you become all God has for you. So I want you to get that seed in the ground. The details are on the screen. But I want us also to get our, our communion elements ready. Come on, let's seal this, this time in the presence of the Lord. Let's, let's seal this word. And we've spoken through a lot of things. We've, we've said a lot. We've done a lot. But let's... Let's seal this. And tonight I want you when we go off air I want you if you have never tithed I want you to tithe into your local storehouse tonight. 
I want you to put God first and trust Him with all of your heart. And then I want you to do one other thing. I want you to sow a seed tonight into your local church as well. I want you to get it ready. It's Wednesday night. I, I want you to get it ready in your local church. And I want you to say, I'm sowing the seed because I'm believing for this month, my church to be blessed Amen. beyond measure Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And then I want you to say, Lord, I give it with my heart, my love to you. And I'm trusting, Lord, that this month will be the best month ever. Mm. In 2020. Hallelujah. Because that's what God told me it's going to be. Amen. And Lord, we seal it yes. with the bread and the cup right now. We thank you for your body and your blood that was yes. broken. Yes. And we seal this word now. In Jesus. in Jesus' name. We partake of the blessing of who you are. And we remember what you did. You broke the curse of poverty that we can be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's receive the bread and the cup. Partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I can't believe time ran like it ran. I mean, suddenly I looked at the clock and I realized we, we're out of time. It really so felt nice. like we were in a sitting room, though, didn't it? Yeah. Exactly. It felt we nice were with you. speaking to the people. Yeah. And I know I did a lot of the talking. Yeah. But, but we learned a lot. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I, really, really? I really have been saying, Lord, how do we say this? Yes. How do we get real? We answer how do we questions. answer the questions? Mm. And the questions every one of you has are such powerful questions. Mm. All, All we want All is real. I want to encourage the viewers as well to share this feed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, I think there are so many wisdom, you know, nuggets, like nuggets wisdom, yeah. that were shared of people just asking all these questions. Mm -hmm. You know, Monday night, Tuesday night, tonight, share this feed, yeah. save it somewhere on a video file for you. Always have it. Make notes. Go back. Listen to it. I don't know if they can put it on a podcast for the people, but it's so amazing that you can just have these principles. Yes with you sure. because you're always going to need them people always have questions about giving mm. and if you can have this in the archive somewhere in your, in your files you can always go back for me share the share the feed That's right. share the link with somebody go who's and got listen questions again, yeah. lots and of your make, answers it's, are it's on all on the app as well get the faith now app mm. all right every program's That's there true, yeah. back on facebook as well and uh tomorrow night we're going to carry on Okay, I'm, I'm excited about tomorrow night. We're just carrying on with what God has for us. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for allowing us in your home. Sorry the time ran out like that. But uh, all that's left to say is, Michael, take us home.